In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple accounting ledger interior using Affinity Publisher. So Affinity Publisher, Designer and Affinity Photo are professional softwares you can use to create uh, you know covers and interiors usually affinity photo and affinity designer for covers and affinity publisher for interiors so as this is a tutorial for creating an interior i'm going to open up affinity publisher and you can see that i've got affinity publisher too and if you don't already have this software and you'd like to purchase it then they currently have an offer in place where you can buy all three softwares for 120 pounds I'm not an affiliate to them and I'm not going to provide any links in the description. If you're interested in it, then you can just directly go to the Affinity website and just purchase it from there. But anyway, I'm going to open up Affinity Publisher and I'm going to select the size of my interior, which in this case is going to be 8.5 times 11. You can see that uh, it's already set at this because I was using it before. So the document units is going to be in inches. And then the DPI, you can see that it's set at 300. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And then over here in the pages tab, uh, you can see that there's the option of having facing pages. With this particular interior, that's not required. And instead, I'm just going to have a singular page. For some types of interiors, it is required. And then the number of pages, I'm going to set it to 110 pages. And then over here for the margins, I'm going to have mine at 0.5 inches so that's usually the margin size i like to have so i'm just gonna have it the same all around so 0.5 inches and then i'm just gonna get rid of the bleed because with this particular interior a bleed won't be required so i'm just gonna type in zero over here and then i'm gonna click on create so if you're using Affinity Publisher for the first time, it can, you know, seem a little bit daunting and you don't want to get put off by it. You know, you want to take it a step at a time and slowly learn how to use the software. So you can see that I've got my margins over here and then this is where my interior design is going to be. So it's a simple interior that we're going to create. So the first thing I'm going to do is just over here on the left hand side, you can see that there's the pen tool. And then what I'm going to do is just make a line that goes from left to right. So I'm just going to click once over here. And then whilst holding down the shift key so that it draws a straight line, I'm just going to click over here on the other margin. And you can see that I've got my line. So it's just over here. It's a little bit thin. So I'm going to increase the point to one so usually you want to have your lines set at between 0.5 and one point i find that lines look ideal between these figures the next thing i'm going to do is duplicate this line and the easiest way to duplicate things in affinity publisher is to hold down the option key on your keyboard and to just drag the line underneath and i'm also holding down the shift key so that the line it stays in alignment so i'm just going to place it over here and I'm using a Mac, so I'm having to hold the option key. If you're using a PC, I believe it might be the control key on your keyboard. But anyway, what I'm going to do is highlight both of these lines and I'm just going to duplicate them to make more copies. And at the moment, you don't have to be exact. We're going to add in equal line spacing in a moment. So I'm just going to duplicate these lines again. And then again. And you want to keep duplicating them until you have the ideal number of lines that you need. So I'm just going to duplicate it again. The next thing I'm going to do is just add in equal line spacing between them. So once again, I'm just going to select all of them. And then you can see here on the top, there's the alignment tab. So what you want to do is click on it. And then over here, Align vertically, I'm just going to click on this button and you can see that it's already distributed them equally but we want specific spacing between them so what I'm going to do is untick this box and then over here I'm just going to type in 0.7 centimeters. I find that uh, when it comes to line spacing 
between 0.7 and 0.9 centimeters is ideal. So I've put in the figure of 0.7 centimeters and I'm just going to click on this button once and then a second time. And you can see that it's spaced out the lines and there's 0.7 centimeter spacing between them. The next thing I'm going to do is add in the columns. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate one of these lines. So just once again holding on to the option key, I'm just going to duplicate it. And then what I'm going to do is just go over to the right hand side or you can do it from the left hand side as well. It's entirely up to you. And whilst holding down the shift key on my keyboard, I'm just going to rotate this. So this is going to be my first column. So what I'm going to do is just place the line in the left hand side just like so. And then I'm just going to make it longer. So just over here. And what I'm going to now do is duplicate this line so that I create my first column. So I'm just going to do that once again by holding on to the option key on my keyboard and also shift so that it stays in alignment. So you can see that I've got my first column and my interior is going to be similar to this particular interior that you can see over here. So it's going to have five columns in total. And Y1 is for the date column, the debit column, credit and total columns to be of the same size and ideally around 1 or 1.1 or 1.2 inches. So what I'm going to do is firstly create uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more lines. So I'm just going to duplicate this 5 times. And then a final time. And this one I'm just going to place it in the right hand side, right on the edge of the margin. It looks like I've got an extra column so I'm just going to get rid of one of them. And then what I'm going to do is select both of these and then click on the alignment tab and then this button over here so align horizontally and then I want around one inch spacing for this column so that's what I'm going to type in so one and then click on this button twice. And you can see that there's one inch spacing over here. And then I'm just going to do the same with the right hand columns as well. So I'm just going to select them. And the way to select multiple lines is that you want to hold on to the shift key whilst you're selecting them. And then I'm going to click on the alignment button again. And then once again, I'm going to click on the space horizontally button uncheck this box over here that says auto distribute and then I'm just going to type in one over here to have one inch spacing between them and then I'm going to click on this button twice. So you can see that there's one inch spacing between them and what I'm going to now do is just move them across to the right. So you can see that I've got my columns and just at the bottom I'm just going to add in a few more lines so that this space is filled in. So I'm just going to hold on to the option key and just duplicate it a few times. And then what I'm going to do is grab hold of all of the lines and then click on the alignment button, align vertically, uncheck this box and then it's going to be 0.7 centimeters as mentioned before and then I'm going to click on this button twice. So you can see that now there's equal spaces even in the bottom part as well. And I'm just going to reduce the size of the vertical lines. So I'm just going to do that like so. And you can see that the table is pretty much complete. And just before I continue, there's one mistake that I made. You can see that uh, I created the design on the pages, but what I should have done was create it on the master page because when you create a design on the master page, it automatically fills in the normal pages, 
whereas if you create the design on a regular page you're only filling that particular page so what I'm going to do is just select all of this and then right click on it and then click on group and then what I'm going to do is right click on it again cut and then just head over to the master page so I've just double clicked on it and then right click and then paste so now you can see that by uh, putting it in the master page it's filled in the regular pages so what I'm going to do now is just add in the headings for the columns so I'm going to click on the text tool over here the frame text tool and then I'm just going to draw out a rectangle over here so this is where the text is going to be and then just type the text in which in this case is date and you can select the font of your choice over here but for this example I'm just going to leave it at the default Arial font and just have it as instead of regular bold and then what you want to do is just select it and then align it to the center by clicking on the center align button and then over here you can see that there's a drop down so you want to also align it to the center vertically so that's the first column and actually what I'm going to do is just have mine as capital letters so that's what I'm going to do just have it as capital letters and then what I'm going to do is just select off it and copy this label for the next column so once again by holding on to the option key I'm just going to drag it across and then just resize the text box so over here I'm just going to type in description and then what I'm going to do is just copy this label so uh, this one's just going to go over here so once again holding on to the option key and also holding down the shift key so that it goes into alignment and then just place it over here in the center so the label over here is going to be debit the next one's going to be credit so I'm just going to copy it again so I'm just going to type that in so credit and then finally amount so you can see that I've got the labels of my columns the next thing I'm going to do is just add a shading over here so I'm just going to click on the rectangle tool over here and then just draw out a rectangle so you can see that it already has a gray shading and then just over here at the top I'm just gonna click over here in the circle that's behind the gray circle and I'm gonna click on this button over here so that there's no stroke around the rectangle the next thing I'm going to do is place the rectangle behind the text so with it selected I'm gonna right click on it and then go to arrange and then move to back so I'm just going to reduce the size of the rectangle and then what I'm going to do is just add a heading over here so I'm just going to type in accounting ledger so once again I'm just going to draw out a text box and then just type that in place it in the center and then increase the font size as well so I'm going to have it set up around 20 point and I'm just going to resize the text box and then just place it in the center so what I'm going to do is click on the alignment button over here and then align center actually I'm going to increase the size of the font slightly so I'm just going to firstly increase the size of the text box and then increase it to something more like I think 24 will look better and then once again just place it in the center so I think this looks fine now and just to have a preview of it to see how it looks without these guides what I'm going to do is click on view and then preview mode so you can see that this is how the interior looks without the guides so I think it looks fine and you know there might be one or two more adjustments that you might want to make if you're creating such interiors 
So I'm just going to move this to the top slightly and then the heading I'm just going to move it slightly to the bottom. And you can see that by creating the interior on the master page it's automatically filled in the pages which in our case is 110 pages as I selected at the beginning. So this interior is pretty much complete so what I'm going to do is click on file and then export and you can see that I've got PDF selected over here and I'm just going to leave this as it is and then click on export and then just rename it and then click on save. So if I just open it up now you can see that the interior is complete and I have my completed interior so 110 pages in total. So I'm just going to leave it at that and if you'd like me to create videos showing you how to create other types of interiors let me know in the comments below.